want to welcome you tonight. It's going to be a good night. All right. This is our annual missions convention. Some of you last week got to hear our speaker that's going into China and North Korea. It was great. I won't say his name because of the sensitivity of his, his uh, ministry, but he was with us last week. And this week we have the pleasure, 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 the pleasure of hosting Will Hart. And uh, he's, I'll introduce him more thoroughly in just a moment. But it, uh, this is our missions convention. I couldn't help but feel a list of that last song that you were singing, just so appropriate. And, uh, you know, it's that phrase, it says, May the lamb that was slain receive the reward of his sufferings. Most of you know that was the Moravian missions cry. And the Moravians would give themselves. Matter of fact, uh, John Wesley was a product of the Moravian missionaries. John Wesley, the great revivalist, had been a missionary before he got saved. Saw no fruit, as you can imagine. And was on his way back from the Americas back to Britain. And they hit a storm, and they thought the ship was going to capsize. But there was this group off in the corner just worshiping, having a good old time. And he was wondering why they weren't afraid. And he went over to them, and they said, Why, brother, is your soul not right with God? They were the Moravian missionaries. And that was the catalyst for John Wesley to come to the Lord and become a great revivalist in his own right. And that missions cry, what they would do is there was a group of young men that had a desire to go and preach the gospel on this island full of slaves. And so they approached the owners and they asked if they could go and do services on Sunday, feed the people, and the the owners said absolutely not. They didn't want their their slaves being infected with the gospel. They wanted to keep them in order. And so what these young men ended up doing is selling themselves as slaves. They literally gave their life. They sold themselves, gave the money back to the Moravian community to send others to the mission field. And then they went and lived on that island for the rest of their life and led many to the Lord. And they say that as they were pushing the boat out to, out to uh, off the shore to go to this island, as you can imagine, the entire Moravian community was just weeping. It was, it was a, a place of prayer. They had a hundred-year prayer meeting that became a catalyst for the modern-day missions movement. And as they were pushing it out to sea, they, they would yell that back and forth as they wept, knowing it would be the last time they would ever see each other. May the Lamb of God receive the reward of his suffering. And so it's so appropriate that we sang that tonight. And one of the reasons I invited Will is because Will carries that. When I hear him, there's, there's really two things. Will is hilarious. I, just, I laugh so hard when I'm around the guy. I just love his sense of humor. But I love the fact he carries this sacrificial missions. Uh, he, he just You get infected with his passion. And so we're going to have the privilege of hearing him in just a moment. I'm going to ask the ushers to go ahead and come forward. We're going to receive an, uh, an offering tonight for missions. And uh, we want to be able to bless Will as he's come to be with us. Uh, so let's go ahead and pray over the offering. Father, we just thank you for your abundant provision for us, Lord. We thank you for the prosperity that we have the privilege of living in. And now, Lord, we give back to you a portion of what you've given to us. And Father, we ask that by giving this portion, you would sanctify the rest. And now, Lord, use what goes into these offering bags to extend your kingdom in this region and around the globe. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, go ahead and receive that. Before I introduce Will, I did want to make one announcement. Uh, Friday, November 30th, and Saturday, December 1st, and then the Sunday morning following that, Mark Sharona will be with us. So Mark was with us about a year and a half ago, and uh, I was just blown away by his teaching the, uh, the prophetic gift on his life. And so we've invited Mark back. You don't want to miss this. Mark is like trying to drink from a fire hydrant. I'm telling you what, that guy is just brilliant. He's working on his third PhD. And uh, I don't know, he's got a PhD in divinity and another one in sociology. And he, you know, he's kind of a renaissance man, but carries a tremendous anointing. And uh, you don't want to miss this. He'll get up and teach for a couple hours and he'll be on the edge of your seat. And so really felt like it would be good to invite him back into the region, speak into uh, the region. And so that'll be Friday, uh, November 30th, that's in a few weeks, at 7 p.m. And then again, Saturday night at 6 p.m. We'll be right here uh, with Mark Sharona. want to encourage you. And those of you, the pastors in the room, we are going to do a pastor's gathering that day, Friday. 
He'll be speaking in our school on Saturday and a pastor's gathering on Friday. So uh, just keep, it, keep your ears to the ground on that. So uh, again, it's, it's such an honor to have Will with us. The first time I ever met Will, Will, you were, it was 2004, and you were a young guy praying for people up in Toronto in a, in a ditch. And uh, yeah, yes, yes. And my son here, Evan, Evan, wave at everybody. Do you remember? He was, he, was the, he was that skinny young guy that prayed for you. And uh, he was with Randy. And uh, I, I remember, you know, being impacted by his ministry. And then he was with Randy when Randy started doing conferences. I think the first year was 2008. And I think Randy wasn't able to make it, so he called Will. And uh, it was just so fun. And uh, I'll, I'll save the story what you did. Oh, it was so funny. But I'll, there's this, i got to share with your friends here. Oh, to Max. And uh, it was a story of the security cameras and a practical joke he played on one of the team. And we don't have time tonight, but it was so funny. And uh, it was here. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, but anyway, uh, I just appreciate his ministry. We, we, he was over in Omaha about a year ago, and Christopher and I uh, went over there to hear him again just because of what he carries. Uh, Will is now the CEO of Iris Ministries. Uh, Iris Global, is it is called, and uh, they have thousands of churches and th hundreds and hundreds of missionaries around the globe. It's an expanding ministry. They have many, many bases. As many of you know, Gene and Tisa, they'll be with us soon. Uh, they run one of their bases in South Africa. Uh, they are touching the globe. It, they are really becoming one of the fastest growing missions movements in the world, and uh, rightly so, because of what Roland and Heidi carry. And they recognized what Will carries. And so they've turned the day-to-day -day operations over to him. And uh, so now he travels around and oversees that ministry. And uh, you're in for a real treat. Uh, matter of fact, let me just tell you a real quick story. I was just in Medellin, Colombia uh, two weeks ago. and met a young man that uh, was far from God. His mom and dad are missionaries down there. And this young man was running far and hard from God. And uh, Will gave him a word, rocked his world, he got saved. He's now running a Christian, uh, a Christian restaurant in Medellin called Re Medellin. And uh, his employees are ex-transvestites uh, being raised up uh, as Christian businessmen. And uh, it all came out of a prophetic word out of Will's ministry. And so he's touched many, many people. He's touched my life. And I'm just so glad to have him back. So let's give a good uh, Ankeny Midwest welcome to Will Hart. Thank you. Come on. Thank you. Wow. Just, just lift your hands to heaven real quick. Father, uh, Lord, <laughs> you ride into town on donkeys, God. <laughs> so, Lord, <laughs> Lord, would you come and, and ride into town on us tonight? Lord, I ask that you would use each and every one here mightily. Lord, uh, I thank you. I thank you that no one is here by accident, God. And I ask that you would come. Lord, that your name would be honored tonight. What a privilege it is to gather in your presence with your people, God. We don't take it lightly. And Holy Spirit, you know me. You know me, Holy Spirit. I don't ask for much, but I do ask that tonight you would walk in this room and, and, and touch lives. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Let's grab a seat. Wow. I have about 20 flashbacks just from your introduction. <laughs> that meeting in Toronto, I can't begin to tell you how many, how many people have been affected and how many testimonies have come out of ministering in the gravel in Toronto? I, I'm not even joking. I hear it all. In fact, I was just in, I was in Scotland. I was in Scotland, Ireland, in the UK about two weeks ago, a week and a half ago. And, and a gentleman came up to me. Um, he was 14 at the time. He's now, this was 14 years ago, so 28 now. 
He's now a, a singer in a, in a band called Rivers and Robots. So, you guys ever heard of them? Yeah? <laughs> Way to go. But, hit, but uh, there was a pastor there from Sale, uh, right out of Manchester, right outside of Manchester, UK. And it was the first international meeting I was ever invited to where a pastor paid my way. And, and it was in the UK, and I was so nervous that God wasn't going to show up. And the pastor's like, you can come. And I was like, really? You're going to pay my ticket to go somewhere? And he goes, yeah, we'll pay your ticket, and you can, you can bring an assistant. I was like, this guy has no idea who I am. I'm just some punk kid. I've never traveled I've never Like, I travel internationally with Randy, but I've never been invited internationally. And uh, the pastor got touched. He might have been standing right next to you guys there at that meeting. And he invites me out. And I was so nervous that God wasn't going to show up. And he offered to pay for an assistant, so I brought Jamie Galloway with me. <laughs> and me and Jamie went to Sale, Zion Church, something like that, in Sale, Man right outside of Manchester. And for like four or five days, we stayed in the basement of this little church, maybe about 30 people at the peak during the day, we would have maybe 15 kids. And this one girl, I believe it was a, it was a girl, somebody brought this 14-year-old kid to that meeting. And, and, and <laughs> he got baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit. We prophesied over him that God was anointing him for worship. And it wasn't until last year I was ministering at Open Skies, a large worship gathering, about 5,000 people gather in a field. And it's 72 hours of nonstop worship. And I felt the presence of God. It was about 12 o'clock in the afternoon. I know I'm jumping around. Can you follow this story? I'm kind of piecing it together. But it was about 12 o'clock in the afternoon. The big worship, you know, like the Jason Uptons and the Jesus cultures are all there. They go on in the mornings and at night. And then during the day, there's these smaller bands that fill the daytime. And I'm sitting in the green room having a pity party. You guys don't know what that is, do you? And, I'm, and I'm, in, I'm having a pity party because I was there, and, but I was there because Heidi was invited and I was traveling with Heidi. And I was like, I would have never been invited to, you know, like they invited Heidi and Heidi was like, I got this, my, you know, Will's coming with me. And they're like, okay, we'll give him a slot too. And I was like sitting there. <laughs> too honest? I don't know if you want that. I'm sitting there, I'm like, eh, I'm only here because Heidi's here and they didn't want me, blah, 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 blah. And this worship festival and 5,000 people. And I'm just like, you know, I got this, this side tent, you know, later on that I'm speaking at. And I'm sitting there in the green room tent. And it, Heidi and I were the only speakers there. They, they, didn't want, they, didn't, they didn't want it to be about speaking. They wanted it to be about just worship. But Heidi was coming. So that, and, then they, and then I was coming, so they created a little slot for me. So I'm sitting there, and all these worship guys, they all hang out, and they all dress a certain way, look a certain way, and talk a certain way. And they're like, oh, you're a speaker? Hmm. You're the one that like comes up after we do our ministry? You know, it was like, I'm not really, I don't really want to talk that much. And I'm, so I'm sitting there alone in this green room tent. It's about, it's about 12 o'clock in the afternoon. The big worshipers, they were all, you know, sleeping at the hotels or whatever. And I hear this worship from the big tent. I go in. There's about 100 people in a tent that holds about uh, 5,000 and there's these little guys up on the stage worshiping, just bean poles, little teeny guys. And I feel the anointing of God, like just, it hits me right in the chest. And I run into the, I run in from the green room tent to the big tent, and I see these guys playing, and I, and I, there's this woman standing there, and I go, hey, like, who are these guys? She goes, oh, they're rivers and robots. And I'm like, what? Like, what kind of name is that? You know, they're not like the heavy, weighty glory boys or whatever, I don't know. There's a reason why I'm not a worship leader. <laughs> That's what I'd name a worship band. You know, heavy, weighty, glory boys. You know, anyway. Um, she goes, they're rivers and robots. I was like, they're so anointed. She's like, I know. I was like, where is everybody? They're like, they're all sleeping. So for the next 45 minutes, I just worship. I worship. And as soon as they get, get, get done, they get off the stage, I just run up to them. I'm like, I'm like, who the heck are you guys? You're amazing. My name's Will. They're like, are you Will, Will Hart? Are you from those movies? I was like, yeah. I was like, they're like, we're Rivers of Robots. And we just like, 
embraced. I was like, I love you. And they're like, we love you. And I was like, yes. I'm like, where are you from? They said, Manchester. Like, well, actually, a town outside of Manchester called Sale. I was like, no way. I've been there before. And he's like, no way. And I was like, I was at this church called the Kingsway Church. He's like, no way. I know that church. I got filled with the Holy Spirit there like 14 years ago when two guys from Toronto came. And I was like, I was like, he's like, yeah, some blonde headed. There was like a guy with brown hair and a blonde headed kid. Some blonde headed kid prayed for me, prophesied over me. And now I'm a musicianary. I was like, what's a musicianary? He's like, we play music, but we're missionaries. I was like, oh my God, it was me. And he was like, it was you? He was like, he was like, I was watching the Furious Love videos and I was like, that guy looks familiar. I wonder if that's him. And like we just had a moment and now we're best friends. No, we're not. <laughs> but we're we're good friends. And and it's funny, that all came out of that came out of the Toronto meeting. That's so, I, I, I just love hearing, it's, it's so amazing. It's so amazing. I bet if you, if you pause and you look back, there's these moments that God has, these, these divine moments. So much fruit came out of that meeting. There was a pastor, I, I have like five testimonies from that one Toronto thing. When we prayed outside, and it was a bunch of people that were standing in the gravel section. And we were just like, we don't care. We're going to pray for every single person in this place. And they just lined up outside. And there's something about hunger that creates those moments. Anybody could be like, well, no, it's outside in the church. Literally, we were dropping people in gravel. Touch, fill, fill, fill. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. And they're just laid out. You know, not even in the main, main meeting hall. It was in like some side building that they held the school at. There's something about hunger. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, there's something about raw hunger. John 7, 37 says this. All who are thirsty, let them come to me and drink. And as the scripture says, streams of living water will flow from within you. Like, <laughs> the question isn't on God. <laughs> we already got the answer. The question's on you. How thirsty are you? How hungry are you? And, and it's amazing when you go and you're like, I'm like, I'm going to go outside. I don't care. All I want is God. You're in the gravel rolling around. It's like, it's like there is something. It's not about works, but it is about pressing in. Yeah. It's never about works, but you, you can't. But even Paul says, I, I preach the gospel that every man should repent and prove their repentance by their deeds. Like there is a deed that comes out with, with a lifestyle of radical repentance and radical hunger. Hunger looks like something. Joy looks like something. You know that? Joy actually looks like something. Joy looks like something. I don't know why I'm holding this, by the way. Trying to figure it out. I, I, uh, I think the time I saw the greatest amount of joy is when I tickled my, at the time, four-year-old son to the point of him wetting his pants. <laughs> you know, like stop breathing, the vein on the neck bulges, and then just, boom, wet bed, you know? <laughs> It's one of the core values of Iris. It's one, it's one of the core values of our ministry. Joy is not an option. Like, I don't want angry, bitter missionaries. Neither does God. <laughs> he just doesn't even want that in your life, period. <laughs> you know, joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Which means the working of the Holy Spirit actually produces joy in your life. Fan into flame the gifts of God that are within you that came through laying out of my hands. For God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. That sound mind keeps you going after power, love, courage, and the, the, the gifts and the fruit of the spirit, whether you feel it or not. And Paul says over Timothy, you have the ability to fan this thing into flame. You have the ability to put movement on the, this work of the spirit that you have. How hungry are you? Well, I'm not there. I'm not feeling it, brother. Yeah? Fan it into flame. The King James says, stir up the gifts of God that are within you. Right? 
And the thing, that, what I love about Paul, when he says that fanning into flame, it's actually an image of something very small. It's an image of, you know, it's like, it's, it's take something small and fan it into flame. So it's, it's the image of taking a spark or an ember, putting movement on it, and boom, it catches fire. Everybody wants the fire, but they don't realize that God's deposited something already. And it's probably on you to begin to put movement on it. Never mind. Okay. Can I show you guys something really quick? You guys alive? Yeah? yeah? I, I, I never do this, but as I was sitting in the front, I, I just felt like I wanted to show you something really quick. You get, get to see a little bit of our world, and uh, I want to show a, a video. And to all the media guys that are in the back, I please thank you so much for getting that so quick. Forgive me for doing it last minute. I know that you guys do your job with excellence, and you do stuff ahead of time. So if this is... is awful it is completely on me these guys did a stellar job and i just dropped it on them last minute but can i show you guys a little video of of what we get to do around the world right now we have 70 bases and uh or 70 locations around the world world of chungam or bases some of them are are different setups and we get to work i think over 400 missionaries it changes every month uh, but we have over 400 missionaries currently feeding about 35,000 people a day schools all over the all over the world uh yeah it's, uh, it's such an amazing, amazing thing. And I just wanted to give you guys a glimpse at some of what God's doing right now. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, here's the deal. Before we do anything, y'all can't just sit there and stare at me. It's freaking me out, okay? <laughs> deal? Okay. Let's take a quick peek. That's our university.
I love that. I love that. I don't know if you, uh, if you saw, but the, there was a scene of, of the drone going out on the ocean with some buildings, and that's our, that's our university that we're building. We, uh, we believe God is going to give us the greatest university in all of Africa, and uh, we're building it piece by piece right now. And right currently, we have the two best schools in all of Mozambique. The top students in the nation are coming from our school right now. And uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing what God can do in a moment. It's amazing how he shakes nations. We are living in the greatest time in the history of the planet. And if you don't know that, oh, you got to get on board. God is no longer waiting we are living in the, in the times of all of those words that have been prophesied. It is not going to come. It's already come. And we're stewarding it now. We're in a season of stewarding this thing that God has given us. And, and I want to encourage you, if you're still praying for a move of God to come, as much as I want that and I pray that, uh, y- y- you might be missing it. If you're living off the prayers of 10 years ago, uh, I would encourage you to, to change your vernacular because what is taking place around the globe is unlike anything I've ever witnessed. Uh, uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, it was, uh, yeah, gosh, about three weeks ago, I had my, less than that, two weeks ago, I had my 19-year anniversary with the Lord. And the, the contrast of what, what, was, what I was brought into in this move of God 19 years ago and now is night and day. It was, it, and, it, and it's so beautiful because everything that we have been crying out for is happening. Like every, and more and greater. I, I was just in Indonesia and oh man, the power of God just flooded this hall with, with, a, with about 1,500 students in it. They bust in about 800 from another faith and they came and the power of God just dropped in the room. I, 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 there's, there's only a few times that I've witnessed God move as powerfully as that in a, in a room full of people and, 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 and worship just off the roof, like off the chain worship. And, and, and I watched 800 uh, run to the altar as the power of God fell and 300 kids went out, thump, 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 thump under the power of the Holy Spirit. And immediately everyone wanted to get saved. Just, just, Indonesia has the largest, it's the largest nation of another faith. I, I say that on purpose, and that might confuse some of you, but we work in a lot of nations, and I don't like to pinpoint one, but, but you know what I'm talking about. There, are, there is a move of God that is unprecedented on planet Earth right now. And I'm telling you, don't question whether it's going to happen. It already is. I, I, I have a friend that, 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 that a few years ago started doing something called One Nation One Day. How many of you ever heard of Dominic Russo? Right? We have a couple here. Most, most, most of you have no idea the name that I just said. And it's, and it's strange. It, it, it confuses me because literally evangelistic crusades unlike planet earth has ever witnessed like like entire nations handed over to somebody to say do whatever you want with our nation take it for a period of time all we want is the gospel to come and flood our nation and presidents handing over nations to 28 year olds (laughs) do you, you don't know about this do you know why do you know why you don't know about it because he's not a charismatic. God's not waiting for a charismatic. Honestly, if I can just be really real, I think a lot of us have thought that we would be his first choice because we speak in tongues. And, and, and honestly, like as much as I love it and I've given my life to this thing and I will continue to give my life to this, he does not choose the most spirit-filled. He never has. 
He does not choose the most spirit-filled. He does not choose the best tongue talker. He does not choose that. He doesn't. He doesn't choose the ones that have the greatest prophetic giftings. He doesn't. He doesn't choose the ones that carry the most healing anointing. He doesn't. He always pursues hunger. He always goes after those who are willing to go further than everybody else. It, it, it is hunger married with all of those other things that is a combination for God to take somebody's life. If God was looking for, 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 for the most charismatic, man, we would be it. We would be the bee's knees. But he's always looking for those who are willing to give their life away. Hunger is a choice. Hunger is a choice. And God, he is looking for those who are willing to take great, great risk. Dominic was reading through his Bible, and he, I, I forget which verse it was. Please forgive me, because I, I, I did not prepare this. But I, I forget the verse, but it talks about, can a nation be brought forth in a day? And it was a verse that he had read over and over and over and over and over again. And finally, he reads it after eight years of being in full-time ministry, and it hits him. My God, we can see an entire nation come to the gospel of Jesus Christ in a day. Why? Because it's in here. So he gathers his friends. Hey, do you believe we can see it? And they're like, yes! And he's like, okay, awesome, how? And they're like, I don't know. Like, how do you see a nation come forth in a day? How do you see a nation brought forth in a moment? I don't know. Like, for me, my first thing is like, what's the smallest nation? Like, that's where my faith has. And that's why I am not getting whole nations. Come on. I need you to catch this for a minute. God isn't looking for the most spiritual. He's not looking for the greatest charismatic. And I love it. I will give my life for it. He always looks for those who pursue him with everything that they have. Those who are, who are willing to ask difficult questions. Those who are willing to put themselves in difficult situations. Those who are willing to be obedient. And in a moment, God opens up this thing. Dominic, you could see a whole nation come to the gospel in one, in one moment. Do you want it? He goes, yep. And that is the difference between people that shake nations, come on, and people that talk about it. And he gathers, he, he, well, how do you pick a nation? Do you want to know how they pick the nation? Do you want to know? I, I, this, this is going to sound so simple, but, uh, but this is how simple it is. How do, what nation? For me, I'd go the smallest one, like I said. He asked his friends, what, what nation, what nation? And they just looked at where God had given them the most favor. I believe it was Honduras, forgive me, but I believe it was Honduras, this is a few years ago. And so they, they go to Honduras, they gather their pastors. This isn't what I'm preaching on, by the way. Don't worry, it'll be okay. They go to Honduras, they meet with all the pastors that they had done these crusades and gatherings. They said, do you believe a nation can be brought forth in a day? Yes! Do you believe it's Honduras? Yes! How do we do it? They're like, I don't know. And here, here's what they start saying. How do we do it? Prayer. Fasting. The Holy Spirit. All those things. Which you need. But we already have all those things. If fasting and prayer was the key, then IHOP would be in the biggest revival ever. No, let's just be real. Let's just be really real. And finally, one of, one of his people says, you need the president. You need the one that God's given to the nation. Dom goes, bring me to the president. And they're like, he's 27 at the time. Bring me to the president. And they're like, okay. Fast forward, I don't have time. Two months later, Dom flies in, meets with the president, and stands in front of the president of Honduras, and he says, your nation is dying, give it to me for one day, and you'll see everything change. And the president goes, yes, and he goes, well, I have a few things that I need to request before you say yes. And then he goes down a list. I want your military, I want every helicopter, I want every single school, I want every single stadium, and he just begins to throw out vision. I want... The, the day that we choose to become a national holiday, so every employee, in the, every government employee, every policeman, they have to attend. And he goes through this list. I'm going to bring, I'm going to put together the largest youth team in the history of Christianity. I want to fly 2,500 youth here. I need a plane, I need jets, and I need 
and I need visas for every single one. I want to bring 20 containers of food and supplies and medical aid. Do you know how much Dom had in his bank account? $7,000. Do you know how much he needed to do One Nation One Day? Seven million dollars. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Why are we living our lives vicariously through the ministers that are around us? Why are we listening to their testimonies and ignoring them? We love a praise report from somebody else, and then we go back, oh, that's great, one day maybe me. No, there is a difference between somebody, like, I was with Darren Wilson just two days ago. He goes, Will, I was the 14th person that God chose to do this movie. I was the 14th. He goes, I know for a fact that I was number 14. He's like, I was the 14th one chosen. He goes, and I know because I have emails and emails from people that said, two years prior, before you doing that, God told me to do this, and I didn't. I didn't. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I never did it. I wanted to do it. He, he has emails, 14 emails from people that are legitimate, that have skills, <laughs> that were told by God to do it. And he's like, I was number 14. I'd never done an interview. I'd never held a camera. I just, he said the first t person I sat down with after saying yes to God was Bill Johnson. He goes, I didn't even know how to turn the camera on. I set up a tripod, turned the camera on, and put it in Bill Johnson's face. That was the first person Darren Wilson ever interviewed. For, if you don't know the movies, Finger of God, Fear Your Love, Father of Lights, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost 2, and, and the list goes on. Some of the most impacting movies of, of, of our movement, I believe. They've literally, like the last one they showed, a million people in one day. He was the 14th one. If you love me, you'll obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will send another one to be with you, the spirit of truth. The world does not know him and will not accept him, but you know him, for he lives with you. That's John 14 or 16. And the president goes down the list, and the president goes, yes, you can have my nation. And Dom, in one year, gathers seven million dollars, 2,500 youth, rents a Boeing 7 whatever, a double-decker, and flies, makes multiple trips, and draw, does the biggest youth gathering, youth missions movement ever. And he's 28 years old at this point. They take 18 stadiums around the nation. You know what Dom said, Will, I want you to come and do a stadium. I want you to take one of the stadiums. And you know what I said? I said, no. You want to know why? Because I have my own ministry to do. I had something on the schedule. And I said no to being a part of one of the greatest evangelistic escapades ever, in my opinion. Because of my ministry. Come on, don't worry, we're gonna get to we're gonna get to it in a second. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Come on. I'm just being honest. And Dominic, it's simultaneously they do 18 crusades. Every single school was visited, ministered to in the nation, in the entire nation. Every single school was visited by these missionary kids. They just went out, military helicopters, flew them around, dropped them off at places. Every single school, every single radio station, every single newspaper, every single TV station. In fact, they passed a law so that the day that the crusades were taking place, every single cell phone in the nation received the prayer of salvation. There wasn't a single person in the nation there wasn't a single person, it didn't matter where they were, in that nation that didn't have access to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ on that day. And at one moment, 18 simultaneous crusades and a single moment did a call to salvation as text messages went out to every single cell phone with the gospel. And the president himself stands up and gives his life to Jesus right there. Wow. <laughs> 
don't tell me, don't tell me that it's about to come. It's already come. It's already happening. The question is, how hungry are you? How thirsty are you? When I first started, we would dream, we would pray. When I first got into ministry, we would, and just like I'm sure many of you did, and I love it. That's what I love about this. God has heard our prayers, right? But what if the catch comes in a way that we don't fully understand? What if we're not a part of it? What if what, if, what, if what we have prayed for and fasted for and believed for isn't within an arm's reach? Maybe it's in an airplane's reach. Are you willing to go and do it? But the, the Bible says that, that, that when Jesus called the first disciples, he, they, he, they, they, they lowered their nets down deep, and their nets became so full they began to break, and so they had to signal their partners in other boats. And the partners in other boats got the benefit of the catch that they had pressed in for. I, I'm telling you, if you can get vision for somebody else's boat, if you can see that God doesn't just want to fill your boat, but he wants to fill others that you might not know well, there might be partners, there might be people there, but they didn't pay a price, come on. He's done it three times since then. Three nations, and he's about to do his fourth. And he's like 34 years old. And none of us have heard about him. Just a few, maybe four or five. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come on. We are living in a time right now where the gospel is going out on such a, at such a fast pace. Are you willing to hop on the boat? Are you willing to give yourself? Are you willing to, to, to dream in a way that no one else has dreamed before? Or are you just willing to survive off the dreams of other people around you? You are not a copy. Ankeny, you're not a copy. Copies are, are worthless. Originals are priceless. Hello? Come on, stay with me. You're staring at me. It's freaking me out. P originals are priceless. There is only one that holds the value of an original. Everybody wants to be a copy. But God isn't in the business of copies. He's in the business of original calls. Original calls, original things that you have on your life. And it's not the question of, God, do you want to do this with me? That, that's what I prayed for years. God, do you want to use me? God, do you want to do this? And it's like, in, in, in his grace, he's like, okay, you're just a little kiddo. You're drinking milk. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you like live this way and think this way. And he blesses it. And I'm like, do you want to use me? And he's like, I've been using it this whole time. Oh, God, are you going to do something? I've been doing something this whole time. Just open up your eyes. Take a look around. The question is not, does he want to? We already know he wants to. Therefore, you should do everything that I did in greater. Greater things than these should you do. Because I'm not staying here. I'm going to the Father. But I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to leave you with the counselor. The other, the, 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 the oh, I'm going to leave you with the counselor. The world cannot understand him. Because it neither sees him or knows him. But you know him. You know him. Come on. I love him. I love him. You guys are looking at me weird. Here's the deal. Tonight. Are you, are you, oh, I just, just, he's doing something so amazing. Right now, the entire nation of Mozambique has switched from one nation of faith to another nation, to a nation of, of Christianity. An entire nation shifted within the last 15 years. <laughs> An entire nation shifted in 15 years. And, and Jesus, the, the Lord puts out, can a nation be saved in a day? It can. I'm telling you guys, we serve the God of the miraculous. And I believe that he is releasing new dreams over you again. I believe that he's asking you to dream new dreams. He doesn't want you to just dream the same dreams. He doesn't want you to, to, to believe what you believe for in a prior season. There, there's a reason why we had to rely on manna every single day. Manna, manna did not last. 
It was for a day, it was for a time period, and it had an expiration date. And I, and I believe that there's a lot of you in here that have been chewing on old manna. But, 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 you're, but we're, we're going, God, it's so miraculous. We don't realize that there's worms coming out of it. Not because it's demonic, because it was old. And he's making us go back to the source. <laughs> I'm going to go. Here we go. I'm going to read the word, because I love the word, a lot. I love it a lot. Okay. Here's the deal. We're going to make a deal right now, okay? I'm going to preach fast, and I won't go long if you guys talk to me a little bit, okay? Get a little Pentecostal with me, just a smidgen, okay? Just like it burns for a minute, and then it goes away, okay? I need to know that you guys are alive, and I know that by you going, or yeah, amen, or like, woo, I actually love Jesus, and, 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 and that helps me, and it helps me go fast, and it helps me know that you're listening, and if I don't, I will stay on the same point for just ever, and I'll just beat it. I'll just, I'll just beat that thing. Okay, deal? So you guys like, got to like, get a little Pentecostal with me, okay? Second thing, when the Holy Spirit falls on you tonight, you can't stay in your seat. I, I, I am not a preacher or a teacher. I, I do both. But that's not my, my major desire. That's not why I got into ministry. There's Mark Sharona's infinitely better than, than, than I will ever be. You're going to get more from him than you'll ever get from anything from me. For, for me, the reason why I give my life is because I radically encountered Holy Spirit in a moment. And I want to honor that. And, and he does that in my meetings. And when the Holy Spirit falls on you, Jesus said, I can only do what I see the Father doing. Hello? And so if the Father falls on you tonight while I'm sharing, you got to do something. You just got to stand up. Buddy, what's your name? Yeah. Ty, stand up. This is what it'll look like. I bless you in the name of Jesus. And then you can sit back down. Deal? Yeah. Deal? Okay, and every single one of you with your arms crossed, uncross them because it creeps me out a little bit. There's so many of you guys. I mean, there's at least a solid 30 of you that are just like. Like this says I'm closed off. Prove it. <laughs> Just go like this and have fun and smile. Some of you guys aren't unfolding your arms. It's weird. Okay, let's get into the gospel. Here we go. I'm going to read out of Luke chapter 8. <laughs> I'm missing a chunk here, okay? And it's real. I love this Bible. I, but you know this scripture pretty well, so I'm sure you can figure out the part that I'm going to skip over. And if you need to, you can go back later tonight and read it. It's good, and it'll bless you. But I want to read out of this, and then I want to go somewhere with you guys. Deal? Deal. Okay, Luke chapter 8, the healing of the demon-possessed man. I love this story because it is the most extreme. It, 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 this is a story that is not, uh, it's not just a, oh, it's just another little story of another thing that happened. No, like this is the most extreme. He is the most demonized in the entirety of Scripture. Man, I love watching demonized people get set free. And I know that this house, you guys do that a lot. Like, this is a house that does deliverance, and I love that. And, and, and I want to share, to share with you out of this for a minute, and then we're going to pray. They sailed to the region of the Gerenasserah Seas, which is across from the Lake of Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. Everybody say, demon-possessed man. Demon. Good. Okay. <laughs> for a long time, this man had not worn clothes. Everybody say, naked. You guys are weird. I like that. Okay. <laughs> the Bible's just chock full of nudity. I don't know if you guys know this, but this thing's crazy. I, like, I'm not letting my son read parts of this right now. Here we go. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, <laughs> but he lived in the tombs, right? He lived amongst the dead bodies. Crazy, naked, hairy, demonized man running around town. How do I know he was hairy? Because I got a weird imagination. <laughs> I just figure you're naked, you're cruising around, you got to have a thick mat of hair, you know, like to keep you warm at night. <laughs> have you ever met a crazy demonized person? Not your spouse, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, whatever, you love it. Have you ever met, like, like I've actually encountered these, these, these sorts of people along the way, and they're crazy hairy. Like, I mean, honestly, like, like I, they, don't, they don't take care of themselves. They're completely demonized. It's, it's absolutely horrible. And they're unkempt, and they smell, and their teeth are rotting out, 
And, and we had many, I've, I've watched many in Mozambique. There's Machete Man, uh, he wore pants, but that's about it. And he had a machete and he would just walk through the town swinging a machete. And it was the craziest thing. It was the craziest thing. You would get used to crazy machete man. Like he would come walking down the street and everybody would just kind of part and then come back around him. The towns get used to this stuff. Hello? The demonic becomes normalized. And a town becomes used to it. And you see that here in this town. When he saw Jesus, he cried out. Why do I want to keep putting my foot on this thing? He cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice. What do you want to do with me? And then I'm missing a chunk here, okay? <laughs> so I'm going to fast forward. Showdown. He goes, don't send me to the abyss, the demons, right? And the strangest thing in scripture happens. This, this whole story freaks me out. First of all, Jesus is talking to the demons, right? And they're like, we don't want to go to the abyss. Don't send us there. And, and there's pigs, right? And you never see this. There's, this is the only time in scripture where this happens. Jesus listens to this crazy demonized man. And, and he kills a whole herd of pigs. Think about it. Why? Well, pigs were unclean and they had cloven hooves and whatever. Like, if that was true, every time Jesus saw a pig, he'd be like, away with you, pop, and it would just burst. But you never see that. This is the only time you see Jesus killing pigs. Jesus took away an entire farmer's livelihood you guys with me okay the whole quiet thing you didn't learn that okay you have a farmer that has raised these pigs to support his family Jesus kills them all for no precedent in scripture he takes out an entire farmer's livelihood and, and honestly, like, where did the demons go after that? Was Jesus like, you don't need to go to the abyss. You can go into these pigs and they'll float. Like, like, honestly, I read this and it confuses me a little bit. But Jesus knows what he's doing. So I trust that what he was doing was perfect. Even though it doesn't make sense. I want to just share something with you. This thing doesn't make sense. A life given to him rarely makes sense in the natural. Demons go into pigs, and, and the man becomes sane and in his right mind. Jesus sets the demonized man completely free, and deviled ham was created. <laughs> Too early? No? Okay. I'm trying. Like, I'm trying everything. I'm being active. I'm, like, throwing out jokes. And I'm just trying. Come on. Stay with me. Deviled ham. It's, it's horrible. And the town watches this. Right? Here's where my Bible picks up. <laughs> when they, they found the man from the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind. Watch this. And they were afraid. The fruit of Jesus' ministry caused fear in this town. They were afraid. They were afraid at the manifestation. They were afraid at radical transformation. They, they, were, they were petrified by what took place. They were afraid. Not just one, not just two, but the Bible says the whole town, just in a little bit, tells Jesus to leave. So it's like everybody. You're talking about a lot of people go, get out of here. Like that's the fruit of Jesus' ministry. What am I saying this for? Why am I saying this? Jesus doesn't mind the extremes. Do you? And, and what I'm saying is from time to time, what we carry needs to scare the townsfolk. Come on. No, no, no. Like, like, come on. The same spirit that rose Christ from the dead lives in us, breathes in us, flows through us, moves through us. From time, whoa, 
I almost died on that breath. From, from time to time. Do you hear that? Oh my God, help me Jesus. I need to work out a little bit more. From time to time, what we carry needs to scare the townsfolk. Or are you more interested in making people feel comfortable? Jesus wasn't interested always in making people feel comfortable. In fact, the fruit of his ministry petrified a town. To the point where they're like, get out of here, go. You're not wanted, get out of here. No, go. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. What? Are you looking for peace in this world? Are you looking for a calling that equates to peace in this world? Are you looking for something that makes sense that the world understands and that the town understands, or are you looking for Jesus with radical freedom? There, there is something that goes along with the extreme gifts of the Spirit, the extreme breakthrough, and, and, and radical courage. Fear is faith in Satan. Hello? Come on. Come on. Fear elevates the lie of the enemy over truth. And the Bible says truth will set you free. Truth sets you free. And Jesus is not interested in making you feel comfortable all the time. And he's not interested in making people around you feel comfortable all the time. Do not confuse the goodness of God with your comfort. (laughs) Come on, stay with me. Do not confuse the goodness of God with your level of external comfort. The two don't go, the two aren't the same. Now, sometimes, I'm just saying from time to time, yes, the goodness of God is radical comfort and and, and awesome joy and rest and relaxation. But sometimes the goodness of God puts people on boats that get shipwrecked. Why? Because they're saying, Lord, here I am, take me, choose me, use me. Sometimes the goodness of God kills a bunch of pigs and upsets a town. See, why am I saying this? This is the extreme, and I started my message off with this. It is very extreme, but the reality is so many of us are so used to making everything make sense, and God doesn't want it to make sense. He wants you. He wants radical obedience. He wants people that are willing to go anywhere and do anything, say anything, be whatever he wants them to be in that time and place. If you love me, come on, come on. If you love me, you'll obey what I command. That's what he says. Come on. If you love me, you'll obey what I command. What do you, I have to do something to receive love? No, 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 no. And yes. I didn't write it. Jesus did. If you love me, you'll obey what I command, and I'll ask the Father. And he'll give you another counselor to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. Come on. So, so, so Jesus, oh, this is going way too long. I got to read faster. Here we go. Come on. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region, say all. That's a lot of people. Then all the people of the region asked Jesus to leave them because they were overcome with fear. So Jesus got in a boat and left. Our Savior, come on, stay with me. Our Savior listens to a town riddled in fear and goes, okay. Okay. Why? Why? Jesus knows what he's doing. See, in this word, we get the luxury. You're like, Will, what does this have to do with missions? Everything. In this word, we get the luxury of reading the end story. We get the luxury of going, I don't know what happens, but oh, 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 everything was okay. Oh, a lot of people got saved. But in the middle of it, which is where we we get to live this tension of radical obedience and living in the now with him. Not knowing what's gonna come. Believing in our heart by faith that we're listening to him, following him, being obedient to him, but not knowing what's actually going to come. 
We get to live in this tension. And Jesus, in this beautiful book, models story after story after story of radical obedience. And we get to see the fruit of what an obedient lifestyle looks like, of what somebody who sold out, what hunger looks like, what thirst looks like. We get to watch it played out. In the middle of it, it might not make sense. In fact, rarely does it make sense. Why was Jesus there? To see the demonized man set free and also to evangelize. That's why he went everywhere. To spread this glorious gospel. You want to talk about missions work. <laughs> and his fruit was one man set free and an angry town. And an angry farmer. Come on, just think about that. Like, like take a minute, guys. Think about that. He takes away a farmer's livelihood for no reason. Now, I've heard a lot of people argue different things, and this is my opinion. He is more interested in shaking a community than he is making people feel comfortable. So are you, used to, are you willing to be the vessel that he uses to do that with? Oh, don't say amen, because that's a tough one, Right? It actually is. It's very, very difficult. It takes something. It takes something that... Look at David. Little boy, 14 years old, stands at the battle line and goes, you guys aren't taking care of this man, Goliath. And if you're not going to do it, then I'm going to do it. And one of my favorite scriptures is this. And David runs at Goliath. David goes after it. He runs at the thing designed to kill him. David sits with a king, a king. He is a, he is a farmer. He's, a, he's tending the flocks. And immediately he has audience with a king. And he has the wherewithal to go, I don't want your armor. I don't want it. I will take your ladies. That's what he says. I love that about David. David, <laughs> do you, just read the word. I, I'm, not, I'm not making this up. He goes, I won't take your armor, but sure, <laughs> those ladies at the end, pew, pew, pew. Like, he's like, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> and we're like, Lord, make me like David. I want to dance in the river. Yeah, David was psycho. He was a, like, David, I'm fully convinced that David was bipolar. 100%. Read the Psalms. Just read them. Up, down, in, out, left, right. Where are you? I love you. You're so close. You're so far. That has nothing to do with what I'm teaching on right now. Here we go. You guys okay? And they were afraid. They go, Jesus, get out of here. And Jesus obeys a town riddled in fear. Are you trying to make people feel comfortable? Or are you trying to be radically obedient? Come on. <sighs> the man from the demons had gone out, begged to go with Jesus. Check this out. This one confuses me even more. Let's be real, right? Man's set free, maybe he's free 15 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, maybe two hours. We'll just say two hours. He has two hours with Jesus. Jesus is leaving him in this town, and the man runs at Jesus and goes, Jesus, take me with you. Take me with you. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to be with these people. They know every blemish. They know everything. They know every nook and cranny and liver spot on my body. Oh, 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 oh. come on. Come on. Everybody wants missions. Ooh. I deal with a lot of people that want missions because they're trying to escape a town.
Don't go into missions if you're trying to run away from something. Don't go into missions. Come on. Don't give your life away somewhere else if you can't handle where you're at. Come on, if you're trying to run away. Come on, this, that's what this man was doing. Jesus, take me with you. He wasn't just trying to run away from a town that knew every blemish on his body, but he wanted to be with Jesus. Come on, like that's all he wants. That's all he wants. That's all that we want. Jesus, take me with you. I want to be with you. I don't want to be far from you. I, I just want to, I want to worship you. I want to learn from you. I want to spend time with you. And that's what this man is doing, and it is beautiful. It's what Jesus requires of us. He goes, follow me, except for this man. Come on. Everywhere Jesus, follow me, follow me. Leave what you're doing, follow me. Leave what you're doing, follow me. And the guy's like, I want to follow you, Jesus. And he's like, nope, do, do, do. <laughs> Come on. Take me with you, Jesus. He goes, no, you cannot come with me. Go back to the town and tell them everything I've done with you. And he takes the hairy, crazy, naked, demonized man and he releases him into full-time ministry. <laughs> What's your excuse? <laughs> What's your excuse? What's your excuse? What's your excuse? Honestly, be really real. When your head hits the pillow at night, what is your excuse? What are you using to justify why he can't use you to see a whole town get saved? Because that was Jesus' strategy. His strategy was, I don't need to be here anymore. Why? Because I have one that's carrying me. That, that his encounter with me, that freedom that he got through me, yeah. is enough to minister and release my message to an entire town that hates me. What are you, so, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just not honored in my hometown. You want to talk about somebody who wasn't honored in his hometown? <laughs> and everybody says that. We use that. Oh, I'm not called here. I'm called there. Oh, I'm not, I don't want to be here. God, take me there. Oh, I'm just trying to get out of this job here so I can go there. And Jesus takes the worst one of the town and goes, that's my plan to see a whole entire town get set free. What do you carry? What are you carrying? What do you carry? Revelation says, do not neglect your first love. That man had no, all he had was his first love. All he had was, I was, I was gone and then I got set free. And Jesus takes that moment to go, go, go. Freely receive, now freely give, and what you've received is perfect for you to give. See, I don't look and see broken Christians. I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. Each and every one of you in this room, I don't care who you are, whether you even believe in Jesus or not. You're better off than the crazy, naked, demonized man. <laughs> Honestly, he's the worst. Nothing you can say or do can justify him not using you. To the fullest to reach an entire town. The question is not, does he want to do it? The question is, what lie are you believing that is allowing you to separate from the calling of Christ? Well, Will, you don't understand. There's prophets and apostles and teachers and evangelists, and I don't feel that calling for an evangelist. I don't really feel the missions thing. What are you talking about? Freely you receive, now freely give. So often we look for a stamp. When I first got saved, people would be like, hey, brother, what's your calling? What are you, what's your gift mix? Oh, you know, like, and I was like, I don't know. And I remember the fir my first response was like, I just want to be a worship leader. That was my first response when somebody asked me that question. What are you going to do for the Lord? I was like, I'm just going to be a worship leader. Why? Because I played guitar. That was like the pinnacle. Praise the lamb <laughs> who was slain <laughs> that I am not a worship leader. 
And it was amazing how, some, how people, they tried to just put me into a category. Why are you trying to put yourself into a category? Yes, we all have different gifts, but when, when the demonized comes to you, nope, nope, go to Sally down the street. She's better. That's crazy. Oh, I need a word. Oh, that's not my gift mix. I'm just going to back away from this one. The Bible says all gifts for all men. All of them. Now, some of you will carry bigger levels than ours, but that does not just for see. When Jesus went from town to town, he met people exactly where they were at. For the demonized, he set them free. For the sick, he healed them. For the broken, he would, he would mend broken hearts. What is your name? Close your eyes as we pray. Father, I thank you for Bethany. Holy Spirit, break her for nothing but you, God. Nothing but your kingdom. Amazing grace, I feel your presence in this place. Beyond your wildest dreams, Bethany. And I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord taking you this summer. It's going to be beyond your expectation. I feel like you have plans to go this summer. And the Lord is going to multiply it. And I see like Asia even on you. And, yep, more Lord. In the name of Jesus. And, and the Holy Spirit is going to take you beyond your wildest expectation. And I feel like you've been through a season of just like letting go. Uh, and I, even like, like you just cleaned everything out. I feel like the Lord says you just prepared yourself. Like you prepared a landing strip, but watch as, a, as it's not a plane, it's not a runway, it's a rocket pad. And I felt like the Lord says, you're about to slingshot more, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Break her, God, for nothing but you, God, nothing but your kingdom. In Jesus' name. God, break her heart for the poor, the sick, the needy, and the broken. In Jesus' mighty, 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 mighty name. Come, Holy Spirit. Hey, sweet girl, just step out into the aisle real quick. More, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Come, come, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Just close your eyes. More, Lord. More, Lord. In the name of Jesus. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Father, from the top of her head to the soles of everything you've given me, God. Double it. Now, now. Fire on her, God. In the name of Jesus. More, Lord. More, Lord. Impartation in the name of Jesus. More, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. See, the angel... God, God, he loves hunger. The thing about hunger is you can fake it in a moment because of an atmosphere. Or you can, you can mean it at the altar, and then when you exit the altar, it, that, that thing, it, it was a moment of passion and not a moment of honesty. And tonight, I, I just, I, I love, as we worship, may the Lamb receive the word of suffering. What a, what a beautiful song. What a beautiful illustration from the Moravians. But that has to be the heart cry of every believer in this place. Why? Because you were dead and now you're alive. What, you brought me here to talk about missions work. And listen, missions is just freely you receive, not freely give. For me, I was dead and now I'm alive. And how could I continue to live life normally? How could I continue to go and just, com just eat cereal in the morning and, and build a salary and build a, a 401k or whatever it is? And there's nothing wrong with that. I have those things. I have a minivan. I, I love those things. But at the end of the day, that's not what my heart burns for. And I have those things by the grace of God. I know billionaires, billionaires that give everything, their whole life away. I know them. They plant churches. They build hospitals. They do infrastructure. It has nothing to do with your, with your job. And it has everything to do with this. It has nothing to do with where you're planted today and, and how you provide for your family. It has everything to do with this. See, in the middle of, of, of wherever you're at, it's, it's this. It's not a job or a calling. I, I, I don't like it when I get even brought in to do mission things. It's like either I need to be a missionary or I'm not. And I, it's just a bunch of garbage. Freely you receive, now freely give. Do you remember what you received when you were dead and Jesus came and he washed you free and he set you free and he poured life into you and he poured it abundantly over you 
And then, not so that we can sit on it, not so that we can wait for another meeting, but so we can take that thing and freely give it away. There are mothers in this place that are radical missionaries, fulfilling the call of God on your life. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, cast out demons. The question is not, are you going to Africa to be with Iris? The question is, are you willing to give yourself? Are you willing to wholly give yourself? Wholly given unto him. Wholly given unto him. I bless you, girl, in the name of Jesus. Double it now. Fire on her, God. In the name of Jesus, more, Lord. More, Lord. From the top of her head to the soles of her feet, I ask for more. More. In the name of Jesus. Holy fire, come and fall on people. In the name of Jesus, more, Lord. I bless you, girl, in the name of Jesus. There's a teaching gift on your life. Why don't you step into the aisle very quickly, sweet girl. More, Lord. In the name of Jesus, more, Lord. There is a teaching gift on your life. Close your eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, more, Lord. More, Lord. Fire on her, God. Break her, God, for nothing but you, God. Nothing but your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, more. More, Lord. More, Lord. Double it now. Now, fire on her, God. In the name of Jesus, more, more, more. More. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. The Holy Spirit, he's on you, not for you. <laughs> he's, he's in you, not just for you, yes. But if, if the gifts, if, if the calling is my calling, my gift, my thing, what God's calling me to, it immediately stops being about him and starts being about you. And I think one of the most beautifully challenging things about our movement is, is that we've been called to cry out for more and then we forget to flip the switch that goes, I have more so I can die. <laughs> so that wherever I go, wherever I go, that people that don't deserve this, people that, that, that are far away, people that the world just hates and looks down upon and and are the furthest ones away that they get the benefit of that quiet time that I've had with him, that growth in him. The best thing that ever happened in my life was I was on the floor, saved 15 minutes, rolling around. I was a goth kid, black hair, spikes around my neck. I was a drug addict. I was a cutter. I was suicidal. And the Holy Spirit didn't care. He didn't care. He, he didn't care. I don't care where you're at. It doesn't matter. Tonight, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you're at, how far away from God you may or may not be, or how far away you think you are. It does not matter. He is looking for you. I, I'm the least usable one in the room. And I'm not saying that because it sounds good. I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm not saying that to be cute. I'm not, I'm the least usable one. When he came on me, I was the least usable one in the room. I was the last one that deserved any of this. But he doesn't care. He comes because of radical grace and goes, that's one that, it, that will give his life away. There is a difference. There is a difference between people that, that talk and people that go. And Ankeny, I know, I, I know the inheritance that you have here. I know the fire of revival that breathes so deep in this, in this very room. I bless you in the name of Jesus. There is, a, there is like a military thing on your life, pal. More, Lord, my God. More, Lord. Father, double it now. And I bless that ability and that, that desire to protect in Jesus' name. More, Lord. In the name of Jesus. More, Lord. More, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Fire on him, God. The Lord says that there is a chaplaincy even on your life, man. That you are going to lead people. You are going to lead people that have done the most horrendous things right to Jesus. More, Lord. More, Lord. And, and there is a, you, have, you, have, you have walked with people that are suicidal. You have walked with people. I want you to come right here into the aisle. More, Lord. In Jesus' name. More, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. I want you to close your eyes. That, that you are going to see radical, like, suicidal people set free. I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. More, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask God that you would release an impartation right now. Healings, miracles, signs, wonders, boldness, and authority on his life. In Jesus' name. You, 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 you are not going to carry any fear, brother. In the name of Jesus, double it now. Fire on him, God. Fire on him, God. In the name of Jesus. More, Lord. More, Lord. Break him, God, for nothing but you, God. 
nothing but your kingdom. Fire on them, God, in the name of Jesus. Phil, Phil, in Jesus' name, more, Lord, more, Lord. I bless you, man, in the name of Jesus. I bless you, man. I want you to lift both hands up high. You have not missed him. I break every lie that says that you have missed him, in Jesus' name. And I just say there's so much obedience on your life. More, Lord, more, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Take him, God. Take him, God, in Jesus' name, more, Lord. More, Lord, more, Lord, in the name of Jesus, more, more. Come, Holy Spirit. Can I get the worship leader up here? Can you come, sweetie? You are spectacular, by the way. Yeah, more, Lord, more, Lord. I was the last one that should have been picked. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. Do you? I think most of the time we care more than he does about our past, about our history, about all that stuff. We care more about it. But Jesus doesn't care. In a moment, he comes and he just, he takes donkeys. He rides into town on donkeys. My God, it's all over you, girl. More, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Fire on our God. Fire on our God. In the name of Jesus, more, Lord. Fire on our God. More, Lord. Double it now, now. Fire on our God. In the name of Jesus, more, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Give you praise. Give you praise. Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. You know, I... Come, Holy Spirit. If you love me, you'll obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him. Are you trying to be accepted by the world? Are you trying to carry something that the world will accept? These are the words of Christ. These are the words of Jesus. These aren't my words. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. You know, I, I have the privilege of serving orphans. And we don't call them orphans because they're adopted. But that orphan spirit, you watch it break on kids when they come in. You watch it break on them. And sometimes it takes a day, sometimes it takes 10 years. And, 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 and whether it's a day or 10 years, it, it manifests in, in, in this way. It's I will take as much as I can because tomorrow it's probably not going to be there and I have to take care of myself. And so we see kids and they just, like you'll put food in front of them, they'll just eat it and eat it and eat it until they throw it up and then they'll just eat it again because they, they don't know what's going to be there tomorrow. So they go, I have to take advantage of everything today. I have to, I'm on my own and I have to take care of me. And Jesus, Jesus says that that's not allowed. Why? Because we have a father. And he says, I'm not going to leave you that way. I'm not going to leave you as one that just has to grab and grab and grab and make it happen and make it work and, 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 and just figure it all out on your own and just stuff your face so full because it's probably not going to be there tomorrow. And so many of us in the movement, we've been that way. It's like, I got to take it. I got to take this thing so fast because it's probably not going to be there. God, I don't know if you're going to touch me again that way. And Jesus himself said, I am not going to leave you as an orphan. I'm not going to leave you like that. You, you don't get left that way. Come on, is this making sense to anybody in here? Yeah. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless you, I bless you. Buddy, from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Come, Holy Spirit. 
I bless you in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, fall in this room tonight. Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus, please, God, not another meeting, God. Please, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, move in this place, Lord. Lord, I ask you to come and just do whatever you want to do tonight, God. Lord, I, I don't have an agenda, Jesus. All I want is you. All I want is you, King Jesus. Precious Holy Spirit, will you have your way in our lives? Will you have your way in our lives, God? Lord, if we have been holding on, God, with both hands, God, I ask that, you, that you, with, with your great grace you would call us out and you would call us to let go and fully trust. I will not leave you as orphans, but I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you will also live. And on that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one that loves me. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he's the one that loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him, and I will show myself to him. Like, isn't that what we're hungry for? Jesus, to show himself to us. See, see, see I'm going to tell you something. Missionaries, as we give, those who are obedient, those who give themselves, those who go after what he's put on their lives, he reveals himself to you. It's his promise. He, he reveals himself to you. He goes, I'm going to show myself to you. And so many of you, he, he, you've been crying out, Lord, show me your face, but, but you're unwilling to do what he's asking you to do. And I'm going to tell you something. It is not torturous. It is not difficult. It's fully him. And it might not make sense. I break every lie that says that this thing has to make sense. I break it now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I ask that you would take us on an adventure, God. I ask that you would take us so out of our comfort zone, God. So out of our, uh, our level of expectancy, God, I ask that you would do whatever it takes. Take pigs, anger towns. Lord, just take my life. Just take my life, King Jesus. Just have all of me, King Jesus. Have all of me. Take all of me. John Wimber would pray this prayer. It's one of the most beautiful prayers. Lord, I'm a coin in your pocket. Spend my life. Spend my life any way that you see fit. How do you see fit, God? Whatever that is, God, if that is a stay-at-home mom, if that is a carpenter, if that is a lawyer, Lord, take my life and spend it. And I just hear, I hear the Holy Spirit just saying, will you not figure me out? <laughs> will you not figure me out? Will you not figure me out? Come, Holy Spirit. All of you who are standing, I want you at the altar. I've never, I, I'm, listen to me. Listen to me. All of you are standing. I just want you at the altar. More, Lord, in the name of Jesus. More, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. I, I've, I've never done it like this before, but I just feel the Spirit of the Lord. He's doing something very special here tonight. More, Lord. Hey. Don't wait for me, guys. If you wait for a man, you're going to be greatly disappointed. I want you to go right to the source. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the counsel of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. I want you to listen. These are the words of Christ. These are read. These are not, these are not up for interpretation. This is, this is not confusing at all. This is the words of Jesus Christ himself. All this will I have spoken while still with you, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Hope. Oh, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do you know that Jesus is the Prince of Peace? And he says, you get my peace. Like, like Jesus himself goes, goes, you want peace? There's some of you in here. You have not had peace in your life, in your marriage, in your relationships. You have not had peace. And Jesus says, not only do you get peace, but you get my peace. You get the peace, the peace of the Prince of Peace. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you. And he says it again. He says it again. I don't give to you as the world gives. Radical obedience. Radical obedience does not look like the world's obedience. 
Radical obedience will not be understood by the world. It will not be understood by the world. Do you know that? Radical obedience, the, 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 your friends won't understand it. But you're not accountable just to them. You're, you're, you're accountable to him. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Hey, we don't... Uh, I'm not looking for a movement of missionaries as much as I love that phrase. I'm looking for Christians that actually just believe. Honestly, and I, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that to try to offend. I, I, I don't care what the tag is. I know billionaires, billionaires that affect nations with the gospel and they work six days a week. I know moms and dads that have radical impact on their towns and cities. I do, I do. I, I see it all the time. I know husbands and wives together that start businesses that, that, shake, that shake communities and change family trees and release the gospel everywhere they go. And I know moms and dads that need to be on the missions field. Yeah. Come on, more Lord, more Lord. In the name of Jesus, more Lord, more Lord. More, Lord. In the name of Jesus, more. More, Lord. More, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Father, Father, from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet, I ask for a release of your anointing. More, Lord. In the name of Jesus, more. Come, 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 Lord. More, Holy Spirit. I was 17, and the Holy Spirit came on me without me asking, and I walked into that church one way, and I walked out completely different. Heidi Baker, she was, she was, she was a burnt out missionary, burnt out, burnt out. She was a missionary with no fruit, with very little fruit. And the fruit that she had by her own admittance was one of works. It was like, I'm just trying. You can't try this thing. You can't make this happen. It's only by him. It is only by his grace. And the Holy Spirit came upon her in 1994 or, or 95. As Randy Clark was there in Toronto, he began to prophesy, God wants to know, do you want the nation of Mozambique? And with everything inside of her, she screamed, yes! Oh, let, let there be a cry of your heart once again. Let there be a cry in your heart. Let there be a cry in your heart again. I give you permission to cry out again. Jesus comes to the disciples and he says, lay your nets down into deep water. And they go, Master, we've worked hard all night. I've worked hard all night and I haven't caught anything but because you say so, we will let our nets down for a catch. I hear the Lord asking you to let your nets down one more time, Iowa. I hear it. I hear the Lord saying, let your nets down again. Oh, but Will, I did it in 2000. I did it. I did it. I did it five years ago. And it didn't go the way that I wanted. I hear it right now in the spirit. I did it, God, and I gave myself, and it didn't go the way that I wanted. I started the ministry. I started that thing. I did what you said, and it didn't go the way that I wanted. And I hear the Lord saying one more time, let your nets down again. Let them go. Let them down one more time. And this time, go deep. This time, go deep. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Let your nets down deep one more time. I dare you. I dare you. I see it. It's like, Lord, but I've been working hard. And I haven't caught it yet. I tell you, the Lord is saying, let your nets down deep one more time. Let them down. Let them down. Let them down one more time. Let them down. 
One more time. One more time, Lord. Lord, those who are great risk takers that got injured because of taking risk. God, those who are in here that gave themselves away and it didn't go, Lord, I ask, God, that you would come and heal all brokenness, God. Lord, and I ask that you would put radical courage inside of them again. Hey, more, Lord. I see it. I feel it even in the spirit right now. I feel there's so many of you where you tried it, you did it, you started the ministry. It's like you did it, you put your nets down, but the Lord's saying, hey, do it again and go deep this time. Go deep this time because, hey, he wants to tear your nets. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. More, Lord. Listen, uh, this isn't a, a call to missions. This is a call to, to, for him. I'm telling you, even in your chairs, I'm watching the Holy Spirit fall on many of you. Some, some of you just need to come and give yourself away one more time. I, 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 you need to come and you need to give yourself at the altar one more time. More, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Hold nothing back from him. Come on. Hold nothing back from him right now. More, Lord. More, Lord. No wimpy prayers. No wimpy prayers. More, Lord. More, Lord. Come. More, Lord. Come on. More, Holy Spirit. Come, 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 come. Father, in the name of Jesus, from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet, I ask for a release of your anointing. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Lord, I ask for more. I want you to lift your voice to the King of Kings. Right now, across this, there's people here that are giving their lives again to Jesus right now. There's so many different things, like even right now in the spirit, there's salvations right now, there's rededications right now, there's deliverance right now, there's addictions being broken right now. More, Lord, Holy Spirit, I just say come. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, more, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. Just begin to open your mouth and, and sing to him. Begin to open your mouth and cry out to him right now. Say, God, here I am. Pray, pray those prayers like John Wimber. Lord, here I am, God. I'm a coin in your pocket. Spend my life, God. Like, like, be like Bartimaeus. Yay. Be like Bartimaeus. Jesus. Son of David. Have mercy on me, God. He wants it all. He wants all of it. Lay it all down to him right now. Just give everything to him right now. Say, Lord, I withhold nothing from you, God. More, Lord. More, Lord. Come, 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 Holy Spirit. More, more, more. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, more. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Come, 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 come. Father, from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet, I ask for release of your anointing now. Hey. Kiriabo Serate. Come on, just, just lift your voice to the King of Kings. Just lift your voice. If you don't know what to pray, just sing to him. If you don't know what to pray, just say, God, here I am. Take my life, God. More, Lord. 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 Come, God, over hungry hearts tonight, God. My God, my God, more Lord, more Lord, more Lord. In the name of Jesus, more Lord. Fall in this place, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, more, more. My God, my God, break out in this place. I see addictions being broken right now. Pornography is being broken right now. Come, alcoholism is being broken right now. More Lord, more Lord. In the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit is here. He's breaking it right now, right now. Depression and suicide is being broken right now. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. 
Come, come, Holy Spirit. More, Lord, come. Come, he's all over you, girl. Come here, you come here, come here. Come to me, more, Lord. In the name of Jesus, more, more. Just press in. More, come here. More, Lord, right here, right here, Beth. More, Lord. In the name of Jesus, come, 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 Holy Spirit. More, Lord, I want you to close your eyes, sweetie, more.